The Sacramento Kings surprised many NBA fans by taking Keegan Murray at the number four overall pick. And in my opinion, they got an absolute steal. Brian Winhurst, he had reported that while the Kings received many offers to trade for the fourth overall, they actually had preferred to draft Murray. Now, Murray has been one of the early stars during the summer league. He's averaged 19.7 points, almost eight boards in three games in California, and scoring 43 across two games so far in Las Vegas. Quite honestly, there isn't anything that this kid can do. The 6'8 rookie is actually proving that there's nothing that he can't do. And it comes after a breakout sophomore season in Iowa in which Murray averaged 23 and a half points, almost nine boards, and averaging almost two blocks per game. The dude was an absolute stud in college. But you know what's actually crazy? He only averaged 7.2 points per contest as a freshman last season. And despite Murray's production, few publicly listed him as a top of the 2022 draft class. And honestly, most scouts seemingly had a clear top three of Paolo, Chet, and Jabari, even if there was a disagreement about the order, because we've all fully expected for Jaden Ivey to go number four. But when Ivey had came out in the press and said he didn't want to play for Sacramento, I kind of thought that the Sacramento Kings took Murray as a consolation prize. But so far this year, he has proved to be anything but that. And let me put this in context for you. Just last Saturday with the Kings down six points with 7.6 seconds left to play, Murray and Quetta both drained three pointers to improbably force the game to overtime. Then back at it again the next day, Murray dropped a game high 23 points on the Indiana Pacers, who were a team that had him number one on their draft board. And he put the finishing touches on a victory by scoring eight points in the final three minutes, unleashing a step back five slamma jamma triple baby to drain the game. Now for Keegan Murray, it's just another day for Keegan Murray. But let me tell you something guys, on draft night, GM Monte McNair, he disputed the narrative that Ivy had a higher ceiling than Murray, claiming that the Iowa product was the unanimous choice of the Kings front office. While most of us thought that that was media jargon, by putting his money where his mouth is and showing that he was the best player available when the Kings selected him at number four. And hey, the dude just might be right. Keegan Murray for president, baby. Let's take a peek at what the grade would be for this year's free agency for the Sacramento Kings. Now, the Kings made two moves to address that talent shortage by signing Malik Monk to a two-year $19 million contract and just last week trading for Kevin Hoder. Both guys can add an element of knockdown three-point shooting to a team that honestly has lacked it over the last year's trade deadline. Now, neither Monk nor Hoder are franchise pillars, maybe just good rotational pieces, but they're both young players that have a track record of success in the NBA. Now, there's still time, Kings fans, in free agency, and some quality players are still on the board. But with Sacramento's financial limitations, honestly, it's going to be an uphill climb to improve their roster via free agency. There are some fringe NBA players like Gary Clark or P.J. Dozier all remain unsigned, and they presumably could be signed for the minimum. But guys like that aren't changing things for you. So essentially in a vacuum, Sacramento has improved his roster on a good deal since the end of the season with the Monk and Herder additions. Listen, when comparing the Kings to the rest of the Western Conference, they're still a good ways behind. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with Harrison Barnes to the rest of the offseason. Barnes on an expiring $18.4 million contract entering this season. On the one hand, Barnes is a critical piece on Sacramento's roster. But on the other hand, the team really can't afford to let him walk for anything next summer. So you might be seeing his name exclusively at the trade deadline. Another guy that Sacramento can move out and trade is Rashawn Holmes, who, since the Demonis Sabonis trade, really no longer fits as well as on the roster as he used to. Looking around the West, more teams around Sacramento's spot in the standings have added talent. You got the Trailblazers, Pelicans, Los Angeles Lakers, then having lost talent like the San Antonio Spurs. So it seems like Sacramento has at least one big transaction left this offseason, whether that be moving Barnes, Holmes, or something else to make the roster fit a little bit better both age-wise and positionally. Now, they could go out and trade for Kevin Durant, but I just don't see that happening. As the age-old adage goes, there's still work to be done, baby. So that leads me to today's question. What can the Sacramento Kings do to improve this roster? Let me know in the comments section what you guys think. And tomorrow we'll be back better than ever with some more Sacramento Kings basketball. But until then, Kings fans, like always, baby, I'll save y'all a seat. Peace.